Hello, my name is Dr. Frankie Lithium. You can call me Frankie. Were you the intern that I was told would be joining me today? Wonderful. Well, they let me know that you'd be arriving, so I chose an exciting experiment that I think will prove to be memorable. So, what got you interested in science? Okay. Well, there's a lab coat and some safety goggles beside you. If you could don those, and then we can proceed on with the experiment. Wonderful, thank you. You see, we're going to be working with some very dangerous materials. One of them is caustic, so you do not want this to be coming in contact with your skin. So, after you put on those things, if you could put on a pair of gloves, the box is also beside you. That way we can ensure that you are protected. Though I would normally, you normally wouldn't have to be wearing any safety goggles. You are new here. I'm not sure what experience you've had with science, so I want to make sure that you're a little extra protected. And make sure that your gloves are reaching the, s the hem of your sleeve. So you really want to pull the bottom of the sleeve, okay? Just so, it doesn't need to be perfect, but just so that there's no bare skin between your sleeve and the glove, okay? Just to ensure if you're handling anything, which you should not be doing in this lab today, but in case you do need to pick up something or if there's splashes, you do not want any skin exposed between that, okay? Wonderful, thank you. Now we can continue on with the experiment. Did they brief you on anything that we're going to be doing today? Okay, so we're going to be working with two different um, substances and we're going to be adding them and determining what type of reaction occurs, okay? Wonderful. So, first we have a graduated cylinder. It goes up to 100 microliters. We're going to be using this to measure out the liquid component. And then we're also going to be using a pipette. These only go up to one milliliter, but that'll be perfect for what we were doing today. Okay, and then a measuring tool for the dry substance. And we're going to be just using a standard glass container so we can see the reaction occurring. Um, this is not technically science grade, but I find that these work well because they are built to withstand high temperatures when you are boiling them. So these can sometimes be okay, but I would not recommend trying this out. just with trained professionals around. So our first step, we are going to be measuring out the dry substance. I have a box of it here. Now this is very dangerous. It is something you should not be handling with your bare hands. Okay? And what we expect to happen is when we add the liquid substance to this, we should get a very fizzy, bubbly-like reaction, okay? So we're first going to add 
several spoonfuls of this to our glass container. We want to get exact measurements. This is very important to not only baking but science as well. this to our glass container. I'm going to be doing, let's say, two more spoonfuls. My hypothesis is that this will be the fizzy reaction that I was before mentioning, but somewhere between fizzing and explosive. I don't believe it will be explosive. There has been no evidence showing that in the past, but this should be an exciting reaction. Okay, one more. evenly spread on the bottom of your glass container. Wonderful, that you can put aside for now. Next we're going to be using a graduated cylinder. We're going to be measuring out somewhere within the realm of 50 to 60 microliters of the liquid substance. This doesn't have to be absolutely precise because in the beginning we're going to be adding one microliter at a time to our um, to the glass container. So, this can be approximate. This is the liquid material. It is very um, acidic, so it must be stored in a glass container. Okay. And I will simply assume that you have no experience with science, so I may over explain things. But in the lab, if you're trying to smell a substance, you waft it towards yourself rather than taking a deep whiff, whiff of it directly from the container, okay? So you can smell that, you can smell the acidity. I'm just going to carefully pour it into this container. Okay. We've got let's go a little more so we can reach it with the pipette. Slightly under 100 microliters, but don't want to over pour. So that's that because you know, in the lab, if you over pour, then you can't return it to the container. We don't want to waste that material because it is rather exp um, expensive. So this is our liquid substance. You can see that. The measurements right just under 100 microliters. So we've got our liquid substance. We've got our dry. So I'm going to be putting this in front of you for a moment. I'm going to be putting this right here as well. And what I am going to be doing is using this micro pipette and adding the liquid to the dry, okay? 
Now I don't know what's going to happen, so you may want to step back. I'm going to use one, approximately one milliliter, and add it to the dry. Okay, we have had a slight bubbly reaction. You can see that the bottom now has a distinct uh, crater-like uh, appearance. I'm going to add another milliliter. Okay, interesting. I have this another spongy-like appearance. I'm going to add one more milliliter directly onto the spongy area now. Okay, interesting. So, it has caused a reaction, a very bubbly, fizzy reaction. So, I'm going to see what will occur if I add a substantial amount of liquid to the dry material, okay? I'm going to pour directly from the graduated cylinder into the glass container. We're at approximately 96 and a half microliters we're going to put in but we're going to aim for 10 microliters and see what happens okay that is an interesting reaction a lot more prolonged As you, if you observe closely, you can still see that there is solid substance in there. Okay. We're going to see what will occur when we add more. Okay. Well, that was exciting. So though there is still dry substance, there's still a heavy reaction. We will eventually use the rest of this liquid substance. Okay. Observe how the bubble fills and has a strong odor. Of memorizing to look at. We're going to be adding the final dosage. I am going to see what occurs when I agitate the liquid. Okay, I'm going to stir this. Okay, we get slight fizzing reaction. Interesting. So 
so it seems that my hypothesis was correct. There is some sort of a reaction between these two substances. It is not a um, minor reaction. It is very clear that something is occurring. And as you can see, it is still occurring. There's some bubbles rising to the surface, but it is not explosive, which for us is very good because we would be likely in a little trouble if it was right now. The smell is slightly different now. Take a look as well. The acidity of the liquid substance is not as apparent. It has a different um, edge to it. I don't know how to explain that to scientifically. It will be fun to put into words for my paper, but... Okay, very interesting. It is still occurring. Our next step would likely to be to time it and, and use finer measurements. This was just a preliminary preliminary experiment to ensure that there was a reaction at all. Okay, interesting. You can see that though there was a reaction, none of the dry substance seems to have um, dissolved into the liquid. There's still a fine separation between the two. So I stir it has a minor reaction, but nothing extreme. Okay. Well, that was a fun reaction. Thank you for joining me for that experiment, and I hope you have a new peaked interest in science, and please come back if you'd like to observe any more experiments. I'll be doing plenty in the future. Um, you can just leave your coat and safety goggles beside you before you leave and make sure to dis uh, discard your gloves because we're not allowed to wear them off out into the hall, okay? Wonderful and thank you for joining me and have a good pleasant day, okay? Bye-bye.